everyone, it's Megan here. Happy Sunday. Um, I'm glad you've tuned in for another week of our story time. We are, as we have been for a while, in the book of Acts. Um, our last book we did was from the Gospels, so we're moving qu along quite well here. Um, today we are learning about kind of the end of Paul's journeys in the book of Acts. We're slowly heading toward the end of the book. Um, and we've accomplished quite a lot. If you have your books on you, you can see all of the material we've covered, which is quite impressive. You, at this point, are almost pros at the Book of Acts. So congratulations. Um, today, we are in chapter 30. Um, and the title of our story today is On Trial Before King Agrippa. If you remember right, last week we talked about how Paul was accused by the Jews for doing a whole bunch of stuff that he didn't do. And though the Roman official realized that he was innocent, he was still kept in prison for two years. So at this point in our story, we are learning about what happened after this two-year imprisonment of um, Paul. Every week we talk about the question, who is God? Um, we serve a really big and really wonderful God. And so every week we are paying attention to a particular part of who God is. And today we're learning that God is the king of all kings. Um, in our, on our big old earth, through all of history, there have been a lot of kings. But God is above them all. And our lesson theme for today is God is mightier than the rulers of this world. So along the same lines, there are a lot of important people. And today we're going to be meeting a lot of important people in our story. But we will learn that God is above all of these people. The scripture scope. So if you were to open your Bible to the book of Acts and you wanted to find our story today, you would look at Acts chapter 24, verse 27 through Acts chapter 26, verse 32. So if you are curious, you can flip in your Bibles a little ways and you can find what the Bible says about our story today. Like as the rest of the weeks at the beginning of each chapter, we learn about an Old Testament passage that speaks to our story today. Um, and today we're looking at Psalm 119, verse 46 which says, I will speak of your statutes before kings and will not be put to shame. And today we're learning about how Paul got to speak to King Agrippa and tell his story. So I wonder if this particular psalm came to Paul's mind when he said, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today to King Agrippa, because it's definitely relevant. And he probably would have known that, that passage. So, I invite you to flip to page 274, and I'm going to start reading our story today at the top of the page. Um, today, there are a lot of kind of complicated political things going on. <laughs> in other words, there are a lot of people that you probably haven't heard before who come up in our story today who do particular jobs in that particular setting. Um, so I may pause every once in a while to explain who someone is, or why something happened the way it did, or why someone that's mentioned was important. Um, because all of these things are helpful to understanding the Bible story. I'm going to start at the top of the page, titled, On Trial Before King Agrippa. So much had happened to Paul. He had stood before the prestigious Jewish Sanhedrin and claimed in good conscience to have done all his duties before God. Forty men had plotted to kill him, and by the grace of God and the quick thinking of the Roman commander, Paul had escaped to safety. He had defended himself before the powerful procreator of Judea and had been declared innocent of all charges. Then he had been thrown into a Roman prison to sit alone and almost forgotten for two long years. So what was next? This is the first place I'm gonna pause because as I was reading, you may have wondered, well, Megan, if he was declared 100% innocent, why was he thrown in jail? 
And if you're thinking that question, then you are thinking quite clearly, because that is a very good question. Um, so Felix is the person who left Paul in prison for two years. Um, and he was a pretty powerful procreator of Judea, but he had managed to make the Jews very, very angry through like, he had killed a lot of Jewish rebels um, and he had ongoing conflicts with the Jews. So basically he didn't want to make the Jews mad. So he kept Paul in prison. And mostly because Paul was not a favorite with the Jews. If you remember, he had quite a lot of conflicts with them. So at this point in the story, the Jews really, really, really wanted Paul dead. So Felix kept Paul in prison because he didn't want to make the Jews angrier than they already were with him. Which seems to be a petty reason, if you think about it, and you're right. But alas, it kept Paul in prison for two years, even though he didn't do anything wrong. So with that noted, I'm going to move forward to our second paragraph, starting, it says, in AD 59. So in AD 59, Governor Felix was removed from office by the emperor, and Governor Portius Festus was appointed in his place. Festus immediately took charge of the provincial business. Only three days after arriving in Palestine, he journeyed to Jerusalem to meet with the Jewish chief priests and leaders. They brought to him the charges that were still pending against the Apostle Paul. Please, they pleaded, as a favor to us, have the troublemaker Paul transferred from Caesarea to Jerusalem. It still wasn't safe for Paul to transfer, or to travel. The 40 men who had plotted against him two years earlier were still preparing to ambush him along the road. What would happen if Festus agreed to move Paul to Jerusalem? Paul is being held in Caesarea, said Festus. If you want to press charges against him, come with me to Caesarea. About 10 days later, Festus convened court in Caesarea and called Paul to appear, just as had happened two years earlier. The Jewish leaders were not able to prove any of the accusations they brought against Paul. And after they finished speaking, Paul spoke up saying, I have done nothing wrong against Jewish law the temple, or Caesar. Festus wanted to please the Jews, and so he asked Paul, Are you willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial before me there? Paul knew what would happen to him in Jerusalem. How could he take the gospel to Rome if he was killed in Jerusalem? I am standing in Caesar's court. This is where I should be tried, said Paul. I have done nothing of de to deserve death. And nothing these Jews say is true. I appeal to Caesar. So this is an important moment. For various reasons that I will explain right now. So the reason that Festus offered to move the trial to Jerusalem is because he was new. So he wanted to, he wanted to get on the good side of the Jews really fast. But Paul knew that if he traveled from Caesarea to Jerusalem, that there would be a group of men waiting for him to attack and kill him. And if he wasn't killed on the road to Jerusalem, he knew for sure he wouldn't make it out of Jerusalem without being dead. Some complicated stuff, right? So Paul was like, well, what do I do, right? He didn't want to go to Jerusalem because he knew he wouldn't make it out. So what he did is he ended up appealing to Caesar. Since Paul had insufficient confidence in Festus's ability to adjudicate this situation expertly and fairly, he knew that Festus probably didn't have Paul's interest in mind. Paul appealed to the higher Roman court. He wanted to let Roman justice decide the case and let them decide in Rome. So this is why Paul declared, I appeal to Caesar. By saying, I appeal to Caesar, Paul was kind of circumventing the whole justice system of the Jewish courts and appealing to a higher justice in Rome. So Paul wanted to get to Rome, and he didn't want to go to Jerusalem, so he appealed to Caesar, knowing that he would get to Rome and have a fair trial in Rome. 
that is complicated. <laughs> so thanks for sticking with me. But the, in the short of it, Paul just didn't want to die. So he appealed to a, a court that would probably have be a little bit more fair is what happened. Thank you for sticking with it. I am moving on to our, it looks like our fifth paragraph at the bottom of page 272. A few days later, King Agrippa II and his sister Bernice arrived in Caesarea to pay their respects to the new procurator. Festus was pleased to be able to discuss Paul's situation with King Agrippa II. Felix left this man Paul here as a prisoner. He said, the Sanhedrin has a case against him. But when his accusers spoke, they didn't charge him with any of the crimes that I expected. They talked about Paul believing that some dead man named Jesus was alive. I'm at a loss as to what to do with him. He wouldn't go to Jerusalem for trial. And then to make it worse, he appealed to Caesar. Agrippa said, I'd like to talk to this man myself. And Festus assured him that the next day he would hear Paul speak. In the morning, Agrippa and Bernice arrived with all the ceremony befitting a king and his queen. Along with them came military officers and all the prominent men of the city. Lastly, the prisoner Paul entered the governor's assembly room. King Agrippa and all the gentlemen presented, take a look at this man, said Festus, as he pointed at Paul as he stood in front of the assembly. The Jewish leaders want this man to be put to death, but I can't find anything that he's done to deserve this death penalty. I decided to send him to Rome, and I brought him before you all so that we can have an inquiry and have something to write to the emperor. I can't send him without some definite charges. Paul's defense before King Agrippa was similar to his speech on the steps of the Antonia Fortress. This time, however, Paul spoke in a more careful manner, using language that was more suited to an audience of nobility. Because the most important listener to this speech was King Agrippa, Paul spoke about Jewish traditions and beliefs with which Agrippa, being of Jewish birth, would be familiar. What Paul said to King Agrippa was also very personal. He told of his own story in three parts. His life is a strict Pharisee. His zeal is a hater of the Christians. And three, his years as an apostle of Jesus Christ. The most significant part of Paul's story was not his com conversion, but God's choosing him to be the apostle to the Gentiles. As Paul recounted his story, he noted that when the Lord chose him, the Lord had said of three things. First, he said, I have appeared to you to appoint you to be a servant and witness to me. But the job of apostle was not to be an easy one. So the second thing the Lord said was, I will rescue you from the people and the Gentiles. On one hand, it didn't seem as though the Lord had rescued Paul from suffering. He was beaten, imprisoned, stoned, and left for dead. However, Paul always survived the, beaties, the beatings and escaped his enemies. Yes, the Lord had rescued him often. Finally, the Lord said, I will send you to Jews and Gentiles to open blind eyes and turn people from darkness to the light of the gospel. Paul continued speaking. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said that the Christ would suffer and would die and would rise from the dead. Hearing Paul mention the resurrection, Festus abruptly interrupted him. You're out of your mind, Paul. Your great learning is driving you insane. I'm not insane. What I'm saying is reasonable, replied Paul. Then he turned to Agrippa saying, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Agrippa, Agrippa answered Paul's question with his own question. Do you think in this short time you could persuade me to be a Christian? Short or long time, Paul said. I just pray that everyone who is listening to me should be as I am, except, of course, for these chains. 
Hephaestus, the king and queen, and all the others left the room. As they left, people murmured, this man isn't doing anything worth worthy of death or prison. King Agrippa said to Festus, if this man hadn't appealed to Caesar, he could have been set free. Another trial was over, and it wouldn't be long before Paul's desire would happen. Finally, a trip to Rome. So, that's the end of our story time today. Um, we saw a lot of different procreators and leaders and kings and Jewish leaders, and all of them had something to do with today's story. But in the end, God was still above all of these important people. Um, so God truly is the king of all kings, and we saw that in today's story. So I hope that you enjoyed our story today. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, please email me. I would be happy to answer them or just to say hi. Um, I hope that you have a great week. I hope you learned something today. And I look forward to next week when we explore a little bit further in what happens to Paul. Have a good Sunday, you guys.